What's up guys? In this video, I will show you how I set up to master an album. What we have here is an empty project. I've got one track. And uh, let's get started by importing our tracks. So I'm gonna grab uh, my file from the Media Explorer, drag it into an empty space, brings up a track, and it names it for us. Now I'm going to turn off Snap to Grid, I'm going to shift and double click and then hit the right arrow key to uh, bring us to the end of that time selection. I'm going to grab the next one, go to the menu and insert into project on a new track. So that brings it onto a new track. Track is named. Repeat the process. Shift, double click, right arrow, and go to the next one. And this time I hit return, and that uh, skips all that right-click menu stuff. And uh, I do this for the whole album. We're just going to jump ahead now and uh, move on to the next section. Okay, so now that we have all the tracks imported, what we need to do is uh, create a region for each one. So I have a shortcut on the tilde key that will make a uh, region for the length of that item and ask me to name it. So I'm just going to name it the same as the file name. Uh, and it's important that uh, the first song in the album will have the region ID of one because we're going to use that to auto label our exports. So I just continue for the rest of the song naming each of the regions. So the reason we do the regions for each song in this album is so that we can use the region manager to then uh, export each of these songs as separate files and uh, we don't have to go through the render dialog 10 times. We can just do it once. And uh, there's also some things that I'm going to show you later on that make uh, things like file names much faster. Uh, so after we've got the regions, uh, we're going to go into shuffle mode or uh, ripple edit for all tracks and just fine tune the in times and out times of each of these songs and put in a little fade. In reality, I would actually listen to the song, uh, tap out the beats of how long, um, how long before the next beat, and then I usually have the song start on that beat. I might give it another four or eight beats, and then I drop the, the next song in on the next beat. That's what I like to do, uh, at least as my starting point, and uh, sometimes the client requests a little bit longer, but not too often. So after I have all of the tracks set up, I will um, make that first empty track into my mix bus. I'll make it a folder track by selecting all the tracks, hitting Command F, check your uh, action list, to um, get the shortcut for that. It's probably not going to be Command F. Mix bus, I'll have limiting, dither, um, maybe some overall saturation plugins, not too often. Everyone's using saturation plugins like tape saturation and stuff like that in their mixing, so you don't really need it in mastering too much. Then the individual tracks will get EQ, compression, uh, multiband compression, whatever is needed, and uh, only as much as needed. At the end of the processing of each track, making sure the balances are all right, all that kind of stuff, I'll go into the render dialog, choose uh, project regions, make sure it's on 44.1, 16-bit, and export it. I don't like to do DDPs from Reaper. I had a problem once where uh, where the DDP was sent to the duplication, uh, they had a problem with it. Yeah, I exported it as just WAV files and used a different program to make the DDP, and it was perfect. So uh, for me, I don't want to take that risk again, and it's, it's honestly a really complicated process to set up a DDP in Reaper. You'd have to do it again as another project, You'd have to go through and make tons of labels and stuff. It's just a huge pain. Um, there's other programs that do it much faster and intuitive. Fortunately, Reaper can't do everything perfectly for us yet. All right, that's it, guys. 
Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel. Check out Reaper Blog for lots more. And thanks again. Bye, guys.